You're entering VTV's Chamber Zone. Your business community at work. Representing the Vernal Area and Duchesne County Chambers of Commerce. Here's Adam Massey and Irene Hansen. Hello, I'm Adam Massey with the Vernal Area Chamber of Commerce. And joining me today is my co-host, Irene Hansen, with the Duchesne County Chamber of Commerce. And, and you're joining us with our, your business community at work, and welcome. Irene, what a busy, exciting time of the year. We've, we're just going through the holidays, Thanksgiving, um, Christmas time, and my gosh, there is just so much going on. I know you've got a lot going on in the Duchesne County Chamber, um, in your area, in Roosevelt, and, and obviously we have a lot going on in Vernal yes. here also. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought today maybe we'd take a few minutes and talk about some of those events and and uh, how fantastic they are and what a, how it just brings a sense of community and community pride to our area. And also it brings in a lot of outside visitors because sure a lot of people are telling me now that um, our area has become uh, the destination for their family. They want to come to our areas just because of all the exciting events that we have going on. Maybe we can talk a little bit. I know you guys kind of kick it off over there with your Holly Fair and, uh, and then we kind of get into our holidays, but maybe let's talk a little bit about the Holly Fair and how things went for you. You know, it's, in, it's interesting <clears throat> with the Holly Fair, um, you know, of course, craft fairs are craft fairs. And, <laughs> you know, they, they carry with them their own mystique and their own excitement, their own following. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, we, we've tried to take our Holly Fair to a little bit higher level, which mm -hmm. is look at it as potential businesses for our area. Oh, whether it's that person doing something at their kitchen table, whether they're making quilts in their basement, but just help that evolve to a little bit higher level. And in the past, we've had a couple of people who have actually bought a storefront and gone into wow, business that's after very successful years. Yeah. But we do our three location, which is at the Crossroads Center, the Strata Building, mm. and then also at Utah State University. We had almost 200 vendors. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, from about that's five great. different states. Wow. And so the same thing. It's become that destination that people put on their calendar. Yeah. And they come from 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 miles around, mm -hmm. from counties, from Colorado, from Heber, and uh, so it's become quite the event. And in fact, uh, we have vendors that come uh, from all over the state that tell us it's one of the top shows wow. uh, in the state of Utah. And much like your holidays, it just becomes something. I don't know about you. You may yeah. not do the shopping, <laughs> but I'll bet you your wife does. And I always yeah. pick up several gifts there that are very special that I just wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. Well, and you get such a good variety. You get 200 you different vendors. That's fantastic. It's great for the community. You've got people coming in, uh, giving you those opportunities. And, and you know, and we're always talk about an opportunity to showcase our areas. And when you got people coming in from outside the area to look at that, and you, you're going to draw people from a pretty wide distance to come to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I had no idea it gotten that big. That's, that's just fantastic for you guys. Yeah, in fact, we feel like our traffic over those two days is over 10,000 wow. people that go to all three locations, sometimes yeah. multiple times, but at least 10,000 individual visits. And so, and, and the other thing that we have started doing, and that is, and I know holidays is kind of the mm -hmm. same thing, is that you try and build momentum for your yes. existing businesses. Absolutely. Uh, businesses might ask the question, well, does it help me mm -hmm. if I'm able to bring in, you know, if, if new sure. customers? But it certainly does, because once they're in the community, why not go to lunch at Marion's? Exactly. Why not go down to Stewart's and mm -hmm. take home a rotisserie chicken so you don't have to cook? Exactly. So it really does build momentum in the community, and you know, uh, it's and been I've, a great I've event. I've seen that too, Irene. You're exactly right. And it, you know, you get people coming in from out of town. They want to go down to those local. They like those local little stores. They do. And it's a great opportunity. And you know, and like you said, people say, "Well, how's that going to benefit my business?" Well, you're getting people inside your business that you may not have other other ways uh, had. Mm -hmm. And so, anytime. You know, I always jokingly say, we'll do everything we can to get them in, and you'll give them the reason to come back. That's and exactly good right. good customer service or, or your products. And so anytime you uh, have an opportunity to do that and showcase your business, that's fantastic for them. And, and you know, and it's the same way here with holidays. It's just uh, every year it's just so busy and, and uh, so many neat things and a lot of free events that obviously the city puts on. And, and we're proud of the chamber, just like I know you, you uh, play a big role in the Holly Fair. And, and we do that here with Holly Days and with the turkey giveaways and, and yeah. all the free events that they have going on all day. I know this year I think they started at 11, so even a little bit earlier to get people out. And that, uh, you know, kind of transitions over into other events that we do like uh, 
you know, with Trees for Charity and your Enchanted Forest, and like yeah. you talk about building that momentum to help those events out, as well as, uh, you know, uh, get downtown and do some shopping at the local, uh, local uh, stores there also. You know, the other thing, Adam, and I don't know if it happened accidentally or on purpose, but it's kind of neat because most of our events are over in November, mm -hmm. and most of yours are done in December, right. and that just makes so it, it to where really we can well. all go to yeah. everything. Absolutely. And the families really look forward to that because especially in the winter, yeah. those community events are what makes things happen. It really is, and so you're exactly right, and it works out very well because we've got November and December, those two months that you can really keep people at home and, and do a lot of fun things right. and get out and enjoy the holidays and get an early start on it. And, uh, and there again, talking about building that momentum, momentum and it's getting started, so it makes it fantastic. Um, you know, in the second half, maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, more about the uh, Enchanted Forest, a great event that you guys do, and also what we do here at Trees for Charity. You know, the real beneficiaries there are the charities, obviously. Absolutely. And, and keeping that, you know, I know you guys had a fantastic event the, the, the last couple of years that you've done that has just been super. I mean, it's just mind-boggling to me. Um, how charitable people are in our area, yes. in both areas. And, and I know our Trees for Charity has been going on now for 17 years. And so uh, you, you look at those events, the amount of money that it's been able to generate for the local the charities. The charities, and, unbelievable. And, and you just, you know, as you get into it and you see these families um, in, in the different situations that they have, it's just unbelievable. Um, you know, sometimes we know about people and sometimes we don't. And uh, when you start hearing the stories come forward of different people and and all that they're up against, uh, I guess it makes us sometimes appreciate our lives a little bit better, but also, you know, you want to you wanna help. And, and that's you sure the, do. the one thing that I really enjoy about being involved with what we do, and, and I know you, you're the same way because we've talked about it, is, uh, you know, seeing the good that it does in the community. That's great. Yeah, fantastic. Well, hey, we'll be right back to talk more about local chambers of commerce and a community, excuse me, and community events right after this. Almost 45% of the oil produced in Utah, 7.8 million barrels, comes from Duchesne County. That oil feeds our state economy, provides job growth, and supports local business. Here in Duchesne County, we're working to make Utah an economic, cultural, and technological leader. Whether you're here for business or pleasure, Duchesne County will welcome you with open arms and invite you to explore all the beauty of the Uinta Mountains. Duchesne County, close enough for business, far enough to get away. Welcome back to Chamber Zone, your business community at work. Irene, in the previous segment, we were talking a little bit about all the neat events that we have going on, really starting the 1st of November and, and working up through December. And of course, we, we highlighted, highlight, excuse me, highlighted Holly Days and the Holly Fair, and we, we touched on um, you know, the generosity of the people in our yeah. area. And, uh, you know, and talking about the Enchanted Forest, a huge event that you guys had this year and also our Trees for Charity. And, and how many years now have you been doing the Enchanted um, well, Forest? Well, the Enchanted Forest has really been about 15 years, okay, but the perfect. tree part, but the live auction part of it has only been the last three years. Oh, super. So um, before it was done more as an outreach, educational, um, just something for the community to enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but, you know, we, we realized that you know, that it was time to make that move mm -hmm. uh, to something a little bit more, uh, th that could do a little bit more good sure. in the community. And actually, you know, what you guys have done over here and what's been done in Salt Lake with right. their big tree auction for Primary Children's Hospital was really yeah. an inspiration to us. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, neat events as you look around the country like that uh, that happen. It was interesting. We send out, when we get ready to do Trees for Charity, just a, a quick note on what you said. We, and I don't know how this person got, even got on our email uh, list, but we had sent out uh, applications in the past, and I got a call from, I think it was Connecticut or Vermont, and a lady said, 
I get your emails and tell me about this Trees for Charity and how do I, wow. we'd like to start one back here. So, you know, uh, maybe we're inspiring others, let's hope also, but you know, you and I were talking about some really interesting points and, and maybe maybe bring some, shed some light on that for people because I, that, I had no idea that of what, uh, what you were saying. Well, there's a huge event that everyone's familiar with in Salt Lake and uh, we know uh, that event very well. It's very close to all of our hearts. Right. I think we've all participated because we've all had a, a child yeah. or a newborn. Or knew uh, someone. Knew <laughs> someone who, yeah. who was at primary children's. So I think that's something we all support. But it's interesting, you know, they raise, um, and we're talking over a thousand displays, I believe, and, wow. and uh, of course, hundreds of thousands of people on the Wasatch Front. Right. Um, they raise um, well over a million dollars, mm -hmm. but interestingly, right here in the basin between our two events, we raise a half a million That's with amazing. our very small population, <laughs> with our fraction of the companies, fraction right. of the individuals, and of course ours goes to multiple, mm -hmm. uh, multiple causes. Sure. Now, Adam, I think the thing that I, I really appreciate about um, again, we don't even have to try, we just compliment each other. Right. <laughs> because, you know, we have limited ours now to 501c3s mm -hmm. only. Sure. Now they can benefit individuals, but only through a 501c3. Gotcha. We're excited because you guys have been able to figure it out, and I take my hat off to you, <laughs> a way that you can, that individual families can be helped. Right. And, and so again, you do charities also, 501c3s, mm -hmm. but then you help individual families. So again, without even trying, we're complimenting each other because exactly. again, we've just decided not to go down that path. But right. thank you so much for continuing that because it's needed. And, and what you said, and it, it works really well because we do complement each we other. We do. When, when I first started here at the Chamber about four years ago, um, one of the things after my first Trees for Charity event that I took back to our board of, was board of directors was I felt like maybe we needed to, to get a foundation set up. Yes. And it's taken us a while to get that done, but finally this year we did uh, receive uh, 501c3 status with that foundation, which allows us now to, to do just what you said. We can do things a little bit differently than, than even what we could do in the past or, or maybe what you do, and, and, but the huge amounts of money and the vast amount of people and charities that we're able to mm -hmm. help is just amazing when you talk I mean I had no idea when you when you uh, were telling me those numbers and you think about the size of our area yeah. and just how generous people are I mean that's the one thing is I we have watch a big heart auction. but that still doesn't make us big exactly you know, we're you know small I, I watch area. the auction and I see how <laughs> the people that can contribute and I'm sure you've seen it too over the 15 years and even over the last three years yes. you know you'll have a few people and you know, I don't know how many trees you need after a while, so you, you, there's a few that kind of <laughs> fall by the, maybe, I don't want to say fall by the wayside, but maybe they don't come and support it as much as they have in the past, because they've, right. they've, they've done that, and they, right. they've been huge supporters. And then you get new people coming in, and I noticed yes. that this year, and so it's kind of that transition that's really fun for me to watch, because, you know, and, and I, I know you would say the same thing, people get involved with Trees for Charity or with Enchanted Forest as they have people who have been affected by certain Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And so once they become aware of that and then they see, wow, we've got a, an area here that we can participate with, that we yes. can help financially, we can get a tax write-off for it, um, you know, there's benefits to us, but we're also benefiting people in our community. And that's what's so exciting about that. I, I, I remember commenting to, uh, uh, somebody at our office uh, the day after I said you know there's not a lot of times in life where you feel like you get to do an event that really helped people yes and this oh, is one of those changes lives it does it changes lives absolutely I, I'll tell you one quick story yeah, and then I know we've got to finish <laughs> but last year at the end of the Enchanted Forest we had someone come in make a large donation because two years before uh, Click which is one of our little foundations had paid for their life light bill oh. At nine thousand dollars, and they came in and bought a tree for that. Absolutely, because they wanted to give back. To so give what back. an amazing yeah. event! And it will exactly. never stop. It will keep keep yep. going around, and that's what goodness does. Well, and we really appreciate our supporters and all that they do, and we thank you for being with us today. And please join us next time on Chamber Zone, your business community at work. <laughs>